G'day everyone and uh, welcome back to my little home machine shop. Uh, nothing too exciting today, what I'm doing is uh, levelling my old Colchester lathe. Now I know I've been a very naughty boy, I actually started using this lathe and uh, once I cleaned it and painted it I moved it in position and started using it. Okay, I was too excited and wanted to get it going. So I've been putting off the levelling for quite some while and uh, now look, I'm not an expert at levelling, to be honest with you I've never done it before, I've never levelled a lathe in my life. All the lathes that I've used have been installed and levelled by someone else. So what I did to uh, gain some information about that was obviously speak to the two old fellows I know and that's, uh, so that's the wizard, uh, Peter Taylor and also Peter Pillbeam and uh, got some tips off those guys, all right? Now, I was very, very lucky that my good friend, Robert Brown, uh, dropped off this Kinex uh, level, uh, machine level. The level's actually made in Slovenia, and uh, I was very, very happy to receive that, so thank you, Robert. It's uh, much appreciated for that. Now, to get a better idea of how to level this lathe today, um, I went over to Tom Lipton's channel over at Oxtool Company, and he had a really good uh, video on leveling. It was a two-part series. And uh, Tom suggested that you put a centerpiece down the end of the lathe, like um, something cylindrical, and then just concentrate on two points here. So to, give it, to get it level in this plane first, in the X plane, and then worry about the Z, the longitudinal uh, second. And that's what I did today. I, I, um, I couldn't lift this thing. This thing is bloody heavy, let me tell you. Um, I've got some tyre levers. Uh, before I, I went into engineering, guys, I was actually a motor mechanic, believe it or not. I've had some old tyre levers when I used to change tyres back in the day. And uh, when I tried to lift it with a tyre lever, it would bow. So I had to go and buy a, um, a good uh, wrecking bar, okay, from the local hardware. And so what kind of sucks here at the moment in Melbourne is that we're still in lockdown, so we cannot physically go to a shop to get anything unless you're going to get groceries. So I put in an order with my um, local hardware store, whose name I won't mention, and uh, place an order online and uh, they will let you know in a couple of days when you can come and get it. It is called Click and Collect. So I picked up this um, wrecking bar today and that gave me a much better uh, mechanical advantage or you know lever to lift the lift this lever up it's bloody heavy this headstock side here uh, is really hard to lift the tailstock comes up easy i can lift that with the engine crane the engine crane start, struggles to lift the headstock probably because the feet i can't get in there because the feet are veed so anyway uh watching tom's video um what i did i decided to stone the cross slide deck the top deck of the cross slide so I stoned that first, so big thank you to Michael Connor Woodwork. Michael's a great guy. He set me down a couple of um, match pair stones that he'd actually, uh, he cut them in half and then ground them on his grinder, on his surface grinder, and uh, I'm not sure how he does it, but he's a cluey bloke, oh Michael. So thank you, Michael, they come in very handy. I stoned the top of the cross slide deck with an old stone I had, then I finished it with, um, with Michael stones, and it came up a treat. Now it's quite amazing when you have a workshop, you look at the floor and you go, oh this concrete looks quite level, but uh, looks can be deceiving. I can't believe that my concrete here has such a fall, and that's probably right because this is a garage, so any water that comes in here, they want it to flow out the front of the door. So the headstock over this side where I'm standing for the video, it's roughly about 20 millimetres off the ground, so um, that's roughly about three quarters of an inch. And over on the other side, you're lucky to get about three sixteenths to an eight, uh, I think it's about three mil, whatever that is, an imperial, sorry, uh, over in that corner. So what I did today, I made some of these feet, and I know I should have used steel, but look, they're out, little, little aluminium blocks that I had laying around. Uh, they're roughly about 40 by 50 millimetres, and I threw them in the drill press and just drilled a little hole in the top centre, and it, right in the centre there, and put some um, lithium and grease in there as well put them under the screw jacks and started. So using Tom's recipe, I put that big uh, single hex impact socket down under the tailstock end right in the center that gave me a teetering point and I concentrated on getting it level this way first in the cross slide uh, plane I'm talking about. Now, once that was done, uh, I could then concentrate in getting it level in the bed length way, which is in the Z axis, okay? now. Overall, and look, many people have said this, when you use a machine level, you seem to you get that close and then you start chasing your tail, and that's what was happening to me. I'd get it perfectly level uh, in the cross slide way, which is the x-axis, okay? And then I'd adjust the longitudinal way, 
and uh, you to throw the, 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 the X out again. So you're constantly chasing your tar, but look, I got it within a, a standard that I'm happy with. And, and look, I'm gonna run with that and then test it down the track a little bit further on. Now what threw me is that I would thought that the flats of the, of the, way, of the bedways would actually be the same height, but that was proven to be incorrect. So by using two uh, matching sets of parallels, I don't have any three, four blocks, it's something I need to add to my toolbox. I've got a pair of match parallels, and what I did, I swept from one side to the other side, and you can actually see there's quite a difference there. There's roughly about oh, 0.15 of a millimetre, which is quite a lot. Now, you know, I don't think the bed's worn that much. One could argue that, well, the far side flat is where the carriage slides along and the other side flats for the tailstock. But this, this lathe is hardly, it has not had much work at all. Although it was in a, a very poor state of repairs when I got it, uh, she's a beautiful old girl and she's hardly had any, she, she's been knocked around a little bit on, on the top here of the, um, of the cross slide table. Um, where it's obviously being driven into the truck uh, with the chuck drawer extended. But look, apart from that, it's in really, really good nick. And I've had many people, uh, many of my friends who've poured over this lathe. And uh, one is Greg, who's actually a, a pretty much, an, <laughs> I would say he's, he's a Colchester historian. He knows more about Colchester lathes than I think Colchester do. And he's had a really good look at it. And he was quite surprised at how good a nick she was. Even though she looked terrible, she was in really, really good nick. and. Uh, the, uh, the removal, removable section of the bed has never been removed on this lathe. So, look, overall, I've finished the levelling. I'm quite happy with it, and uh, time will tell. I'll let it settle for a little bit. Um, who knows? I, I actually started to worry that it might have had a little slight twist in it, but I highly doubt that. This, this casting, honestly, it's as strong as a malleable, okay, and uh, I don't think it's got any twist in it. Put it this way, I, I could adjust one of these front uh, jacking screws on the headstock and it would actually affect the tail stock, would kick it up a little bit, so it's that rigid and solid. Uh, definitely Colchester made a good lathe back in the day, but on another note, uh, my channel's fast uh, coming up to 500 subscribers for Aaron Engineering, and I'm really, really happy about that, so just want to say thank you to everyone for following along and, and supporting this channel. This channel I predominantly opened this channel as a build platform where I'd show builds and not much talking or teaching. As you know, I'm a, I'm a school teacher, right? Um, and I wanted to keep the teaching side of things on the DCT channel where I showed predominantly CNC machining, not much manual machining, the occasional manual machining, but it's predominantly CAD CAM, CNC, everything on that channel. Uh, and this channel was purely for build videos where I could make stuff um, manually, do welding, fabrication, and to be myself. Okay, more importantly. So in saying that, ladies and gents, if you would like to uh, shove a comment down below, I've got some little free uh, giveaways here today. So what I'll do uh, in about a week's time, I'll um, run the comments through a automatic generator and I'll pick a couple of winners. So I've got some Mitotoyo um, stubby holders here. Now they're nice and light so I can post them anywhere, okay? And I've also got some stickers that I've had made for this channel. So the Aaron Engineering official sticker for this channel. And I'll also throw in one of my DCT ones and, and an older DCT one as well, guys. So there, there, look, there's two stubby holders. So what I'll do, I'll give out three prizes. So prize one, prize two, and they'll also get stickers. And the third prize will just be stickers because I don't have another stubby holder. Uh, in saying that, I hope you found this video enjoying. I'm sorry I didn't actually show you much of the leveling process. Uh, no doubt you've seen me flick some videos while I've been talking about this. There is lots of lathe leveling videos on YouTube and I just didn't want to add to another one. But I just wanted to share with you my journey of leveling this old culture today. So thank you very much guys for following along and don't forget to put a comment down below. And uh, who knows, you might win yourself a stubby holder and some stickers. Good on you and uh, thank you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.